Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is an introduction to IP subnetting and we're going to be spending a few lessons on the topic of IP subnetting. So for this introduction we're going to talk about the concepts involved. What, what exactly is subnetting and why do we want to use it and we'll, we'll give a few examples to illustrate those answers. IP subnetting is perhaps one of the most important things you can know and understand because you're going to use it pretty much whenever you have to touch an IP address. Um, it is that fundamental to networking and it comes up on the exams and quite simply you need to know it. So let's begin and we've talked a little bit so far about the classes of networks and by knowing an IP address and what class of network it falls into we can determine how many hosts exist in a particular subnet. So for example, if we take this class B network, how do I know it's a class B? Well, because the first octet, 172, falls within the class B range, which is 128 to 191. So a class B network has the first two octets dedicated to the network portion, and it has the second two octets, the third and the fourth octet, dedicated to the host portion. Well, that gives us a lot of hosts and in fact here for a class B network we have a little over 65,000 hosts for each class B network. Now that's really big and in fact in most production networks these days you never really find this many hosts on one, on one single network segment. So it's really actually kind of wasteful. And that's a bit of a problem because IP addresses, um, we talked about IP4 being depleted and the introduction of IP version 6. Well, we want to preserve and, and really be efficient with our allocation of IP addresses. So that's where subnetting comes into play. And basically subnetting enables us to divide a classful network like this class B network into several smaller groups or smaller networks to meet our needs. These smaller, these smaller groups of networks are often just referred to as subnets. And we're going to take a look now at first the, an approach to network design which does not include, not include subnetting. And then we'll take a look at how subnetting, how subnetting can make it a lot more efficient. So let's take a look at this diagram. We have four separate network segments and they're divided or they're separated by a router. And that means each one is a separate IP network. So if we were going to allocate IP addresses for each of the four networks without using subnetting, it would look something like this. We could begin with the class B network we assigned and then for each of the remaining networks we'd have to assign a different class B network. And so that's what we've done here, 172.16.17, 18, and 19. Well, this is really inefficient because we're using three IPs in each of these networks, two for the PCs and then one for the router interface, and then that's it. However, we have over 65,000 available to us. So if we take a look at what IP subnetting can do for us, let's begin with our original class B network, we're going to take the class B network and we're going to divide it into smaller networks or sub-networks of the class B network. And then that way we could use those smaller networks to better fit our needs. Each one of these sub-networks is just referred to as a subnet. And so the term subnet comes from subdivided network because the network, the class B in this, in this case, 172.16, is being divided into subnetworks. Okay, so subnet comes from subdivided networks. Well, let's take a look at how we could approach this network when we do use IP subnetting. So we have the same networks here and we'll begin, but this time we're going to begin a little bit differently. We're going to use subnetting and what that means is we had two octets dedicated to the host portion, the third octet and the fourth octet, which used to be zero, 00 for the network number. But you can see here we have taken the third octet and we're now going to use that for a new purpose. In fact, the third octet is going to be used to designate the different subnets. 
So if we continue to number, you can see now we have 172.16.2.3 and .4. Now all four of these fall within the same class B network of 172.16, but now they each have a subnetwork number. So what we're doing here is we're introducing a new part of the IP address, and that's the subnet part. So, so far, we've just had the network portion and the host portion, and now, in between the two, we're introducing the subnet port part. So, I'll just circle the subnet part on each of these so you can see. As you can see, we have the network portion to the left and the host portion to the right, so that means the subnet part falls between the network and the host portions. It also means that we get a new subnet network ID whenever we subnet. So whereas before we had 172.16.0.0 as the subnet, as the network ID, well now we have new network IDs which include the subnet number. Okay? And obviously that means each PC in the networks now will share that um, network ID. So, for instance, down here, this PC is going to have an IP address of 172.16.3.4, for example. This one could be .5 in the fourth octet. Let's take a closer look at the IP address now that we've introduced subnetting and talk a little bit more about how the structure of it has changed. So the subnet portion of the IP address is taken from the host portion, and the network portion never changes. If we were to map that to what we were just looking at, the two examples, in the first example, without subnetting, we had IP addresses 172.16, and that was your network portion, and then in the host portion, we had 0.0. .0. Then we introduce subnetting. So like we said, the network portion doesn't change, 172.16. However, now we've taken the third octet, and instead of using it for hosts, we're now using it for the subnet. And then finally, the fourth octet is all that remains for hosts. So you can see we're, we're looking at the IP address differently now because we're, we're, we're cutting it up. We've introduced a new section or a new portion. When a router received a packet that was not subnetted, it would just look at the network portion in order to route it. But now when a router receives a packet that has been subnetted, it's going to look at the network portion and look at the subnet portion because this represents a separate network. So to summarize what we've covered, we know that subnetting enables us to be more efficient with our use of IP addresses. So we are not stuck with a huge class B or class A network which has thousands of hosts in it that we'll never use. With subnetting, we can chop it up into smaller subnets or smaller groups uh, which better serve our purposes. And so in order to do this, we need to take some bits or an octet from the host portion in order to create the new portion, and that new portion is the subnet portion. Now, when a router considers routing a packet that has been subnetted, it looks not only at the network portion, but it looks at the subnet portion as well, whereas before it was just looking at the network portion. Okay, so these are the concepts involved with IP subnetting. As we explore IP subnetting further, we'll get more and more into the nitty-gritty details of how we actually do this. Okay, so that's it. That's the intro to IP subnetting. Thanks for watching, and study IP addressing every day.